To explain how nodes work, I'm going to use the analogy of eating a pizza. And the first node that I want to introduce to you is called the media out node. So let me bring that node in. So I'm just going to do shift space bar and type in media out. The media out node is one of the most basic nodes in Fusion. What this node says is whatever is in this node is what you ultimately get as an output. So in our case, let's assume that eating the pizza is my final desired output. Hence, the media out node is me eating a pizza. So for the time being, I'm going to rename this by clicking F2 and calling this the eat the pizza node. The way you bring something up into these two monitors is by clicking the number one for the left monitor or clicking the number two for the right monitor. As a convention, the right monitor is always the output monitor. So I'm going to click media out one and press the number two and something should show up here. Now you would see here in the bottom, you have these three dots and the second dot is white in color, which means that whatever is in media out one is now being displayed in the right monitor, but there's nothing in media out one Hence, nothing is being displayed in the right monitor. For the purposes of our example, I want to eat a pizza, but I don't have a pizza. There is no pizza. Hence, eat the pizza is not possible. It's empty. Hence, on my monitor, I have nothing. Now, for me to be able to eat a pizza right now, I first need to have a pizza with me. And the easiest way for me to do that is to call Domino's and ask them to deliver a pizza. So that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to drag this delivered pizza into my Fusion screens. And when I drop it, you will notice that a media in one node is automatically created. This media in one node, if I press the number one to bring it to the left screen here, contains the delivered pizza in the pizza box. Media in nodes usually refer to assets that you already have on your computer. So if you want to input your video clips or downloaded graphics or images or photographs or clip arts, you do that using media in nodes. Now I have a pizza, but my media out does not show a pizza. So unless my media out has the pizza, I can't eat it. So there's something that needs to happen for this pizza node to be input to the eat the pizza node. And to do that, I need to connect this node to this node. And once I make that connection, the pizza is now available in media out on the eat the pizza node. Hence, I can now eat the pizza. Let me quickly rename media in to call it the delivered pizza. So the delivered pizza is here. I've connected it to eat the pizza and hence I'm able to eat it. Now let's look at these two nodes in a little more detail because these two are your fundamental building blocks in nodes. You would notice that I connected the left hand side node, the delivered pizza node to eat the pizza node using these two icons on the nodes itself. Every node has two different types of icons. One set of icons would be triangular in shape and one set of icons would be rectangular in shape. All the triangular icons refer to inputs into a node and all the rectangular icons refer to outputs from the node. Because I need to input into the eat the pizza node and I need to output it from the delivered pizza node which is this one, I'm connecting the output icon, the rectangle, into the triangle icon on the eat the pizza node. Hence, these two were able to be connected to each other. If I try to connect an input to an input, it just wouldn't work, it wouldn't connect. You need to connect an output to an input for it to work. The other thing to notice is that media in one and media out one both have a blue line underneath. So all media in nodes and media out nodes usually have a blue color to indicate the type of action that that node performs. So let's take the example one step further. Let's say that I am not interested in delivered pizza. I would rather make the pizza at home using a frozen base that I have in my refrigerator. So how does this node structure change in that example? So to do that, let me delete this delivered pizza and instead drag in a different media in one node. And this media in one node now contains the frozen pizza base. Now, if I were to connect this media in one into my output, you know what? I'm going to have to eat a frozen pizza base. And I do not want to do that. I actually want to have a nice little pizza. So I'm not going to connect this into the eat the pizza. So let's rename this quickly, call this the frozen base. So 
I have a frozen base, but to make a pizza, I need a few more things, right? So I'm going to import the pizza sauce. So let's call this the pizza sauce. And you can note that these are all media in nodes. I'm going to import the mozzarella cheese, the parmesan cheese. Um, I'm going to have pineapples. Pineapples absolutely belong on pizzas. If you do not like pineapples on pizzas, I do not know what's wrong with you. Shredded chicken. So let's assume that these are my ingredients for my pizza. So each of these have the blue line under them, which means that they are all media in nodes. They are all assets that I already have. Something needs to happen here for me to be able to eat the pizza. And that is, I need to now layer them one on top of another. And the way you layer multiple inputs one on top of another is using what's called a multi-merge node. So that's the next type of node that we're going to learn. It's a multi-merge. So shift spacebar type multi-merge. Multi-merge is the closest to layering in After Effects or in Photoshop that you will see here in Fusion. So on this multi-merge node, like last time, you see input connectors with the triangular icon and you have the rectangular icon which represents the output connector. But unlike the media in and the media out nodes, you have multiple inputs coming here. So let's take a look at what these colored inputs mean. When you see an input with the yellow color, it means it's a background layer. So when you're multi-merging, you're basically putting one thing on top of another. So you need to tell the multi-merge node, this goes to the bottom, that goes to the top. So yellow is the bottom layer. White is what's called a foreground layer, layer one. Now let's take a look at what happens to the multi-merge as we start layering things one on top of the other. So I'm gonna click one by choosing the multi-merge so that the multi-merge output is actually on the left-hand side screen over here. Multi-merge does not have anything right now, hence it's black. I'm going to start by connecting the frozen base to the background layer, the bottom layer of the multi-merge. The background layer is always yellow in color, so that's this one. So I'm going to connect the frozen base into the background layer, and as soon as I do that, the first layer is the pizza base. It's at the bottom. Think of it as if you're looking from the top down. Next, I'm going to add the pizza sauce on top of the frozen base. Now, before I drag the pizza sauce and connect it here into layer one, notice that we currently have four icons surrounding the multi-merge, but the minute I connect the pizza sauce into this input, you will see that a brand new input has been created. Beauty of the multi-merge tool is that you can keep layering infinitely. So you can put one layer on top of the other, and as soon as you've connected a brand new input, another input shows up automatically for you to connect to. So you can see now that the pizza sauce is on top of the uh, frozen base. On top of the pizza sauce, I'm going to add the Parmesan cheese, and that's gonna get connected to the layer two input. So palm cheese goes into layer two. And on top of the Parmesan cheese, I'm gonna add the shredded chicken. So that goes into this new node that just got created. And then here into layer four, I'm gonna connect the pineapple input. And then finally, on top of everything, I'm gonna add the mozzarella cheese. So now what I've done is I've basically added one thing on top of another. If I were now to connect my multi-merges output to my eat the pizza, what I'm going to have to do is literally eat an assembled pizza that's not cooked. And that's not what I want. So my pizza is currently not ready to be eaten. So I'm gonna remove this because I can't eat it the way it is. Before I do anything further, I missed a step. Take a look at my Parmesan cheese. I'm gonna bring it to the left. It's currently in a solid rocky shape. That's not how Parmesan cheese works on pizza. I need this to be finely shredded so that I can layer it on top of my pizza base. So in order to shred the Parmesan cheese, an action needs to happen on that cheese. So anytime an action needs to happen, you need to bring in an action node to connect it to your existing nodes. So in this case, I'm going to bring in a blur node and this blur node is going to pretend as if it is my shredding node. I'm gonna call this the shred cheese node and you would notice that for the first time you're now seeing a different color on this node. This color is yellow. Yellow colors represent actions, activities, filters that you're applying on previous nodes. Now if I bring this node into media one, you'd see that I'm just gonna blur it a little more 
assume that this blurring means I'm shredding the, the actual cheese. Just, uh, just an illustration. But I have now added a processing on top of the Parmesan cheese. And now I've connected it to the multi-merge node. So now the multi-merge has everything layered and the palm cheese has now been shredded and then layered on top of the multi-merge. So now I have an uncooked pizza here on the multi-merge. What do I need to do next? Next, I need to cook it. So I need to cook it in an oven. So in our example, I'm going to illustrate the oven using this brightness contrast node. So I'm going to add the oven between the multi-merge and me eating the pizza. So something needs to happen here. So I'm going to rename this to be the oven and I'm going to connect the uncooked pizza and I'm going to put that into the oven and then I'm going to connect the output of the oven, the cooked pizza into the eat the pizza node. So now here in eat the pizza, I have a cooked pizza that's ready for me to eat. Now the oven needs some properties, right? The oven needs to be at let's say at 180 degrees, it needs to be preheated and it needs to be in a very specific mode. It needs to be in pizza mode or it needs to be in convection mode. Those are the properties that the oven needs to have. In Fusion, the way you assign values to the properties of a node is on the inspector panel on the right hand side here. So to illustrate this example, I'm going to use the brightness slider as how long do I need the oven to be cooking for. So I'm going to say cook this for two minutes and it needs to be cooked at 250 degrees. So I'm gonna use the saturation slider to refer to how the temperature is. So now the oven has processed whatever is coming into it using the settings that we are setting on the inspector here on the right in order to do the processing. And once this processing is done, the food that I get is now ready to eat pizza. The next type of nodes for you to understand are what are called generator nodes. Generator nodes are here on the left hand side. These four icons are types of generator nodes. Generator nodes don't refer to things that you have. These things refer to things that Resolve or Fusion generates for you. For example, this node is called a background node. So if you bring that in and you can say that I want a background of, of red color here. I'm just going to bring this into node one. And you can see a red color background was created for you. You did not bring in an image that's red in color. You asked Resolve to generate red color for you. Now, in our example, what I'm going to use a generator node for is the oven needs heat to work. So I'm going to say I'm going to supply heat to it. So this is going to be my heat node. And I'm going to connect this to the mask input of the oven. So this is the first time I'm introducing the mask input to you. Mask inputs are always blue in color. I'm not going to explain how masks work in this video because I have a complete detailed introduction to masks linked in this video here. Please go watch that after you watch this. So let's take the complexity one level further and pretend that I do not want to use the frozen pizza base. I want to make the pizza base uh, from scratch. So from the theory that we have learned so far, are we able to identify how the end nodes should look like for me to achieve that. I'm going to disconnect the frozen pizza base. I'm going to delete this. In order to make the pizza base, I need flour. So I'm, this is my flour. So some yeast, some water, and I need some oil. Now, what do I need to do? I need to put these four things together and knead them. And the way you would put things together is the tool that we've already seen, which is the multi-merge tool. So let me bring in a multi-merge tool and let me connect it doesn't matter what the background is and what the foreground is here. So I'm just going to connect them all. And once I've mixed them all together, I now need to knead it. So it's an action that needs to happen. So I'm from here, this output needs to go to an action. So I'm, one way to find what tools are available to you is by clicking shift space bar. And this brings up a select tool pop up where every single tool that's available to you is listed. I'm going to use the resize because the yeast is going to make the dough rise. So let's use a resize tool here. I'm going to connect the output of the multi-merge into the resize because I want it to grow. After the resize happens, so this is the, I'm going to call this the kneading and resting node. So once the kneading and resting has happened, after the dough has risen, I need to make it into the shape of a pizza base. 
So another action needs to happen. So I'm going to bring in beauty node. I'm going to make it beautiful. So this is the uh, make it a circle. And once the circle is ready, this circle now takes the place of the frozen pizza base that we earlier had. So this now connects to the background node of this multi-merge. And again, I now have a pizza that I can eat because everything that happens here is leading towards me getting a completed pizza to eat. Every node is an action that needs to be taken on the output of the preceding node. And every node has an output that it can give to a succeeding node. And the final node is always the media out node, which is the final node that you're going to consume. And in this case, the media out node is eating the pizza, but usually the media out node is what you see here on the edit page. Every single node here has a corresponding section on the inspector with its own types of values that you can modify. Depending on the node that you have, the options on the inspector would be very logical to, to see. Now, when you're in Fusion, most of the frequently used tools are immediately available to you here in this toolbar. So let's quickly understand what we have here. The first four tools are your generator tools, like your background, your fast noise, your text node, and your paint nodes. So if I just drag in a text node here, this is where you can type in any text. So I'm going to call this any text pizza, and I'm going to apply this on top of everything here in this multi-merge so that you can see any text, any text pizza is written on top of that. So again, you're not importing a text, you're generating a text here. The next four nodes are your color corrector nodes. So your color corrector, your color curves, hue curves. So pretty much everything that you would normally do on your color tab, you can achieve that here as well. And if you want to understand what a specific node does, just try importing it and see what values become available to you. If you didn't know what transform does, you import transform and just take a look at the inspector. You have a size slider, an aspect slider, an angle slider. The easiest thing that I would say is connect a text node to a transform node and bring this into output one and just see what happens. I'm going to change the size. Okay, so a transform node changes the size of its input and that there we know. So this is how you understand what any node does is by importing the node connect a text node or a background node to it and just play with the values that are available to you on the inspector and you would immediately know what ability a node provides you. The next four inputs are your uh, mask inputs. So these are your, this is a rectangle input, this is a elliptical mask, this is a polygonal mask and this is a B-spline mask. You can connect each of these to the mask inputs. For example, if I were to connect the elliptical mask into the oven, this is the only place where the food is getting cooked. The food is not getting cooked anywhere else because this elliptical mask tells the oven this is the only place where heat is being applied to. No, that's, that's the idea. Silly idea, but that's the idea. Um, and don't worry too much about all these tools that are starting with the letter P and these 3D tools. They are, they are quite, they're, they're more advanced tools that you could get there once you're comfortable with the basics of how the Fusion page works. So hopefully this primer into how nodes work was helpful. If you want me to go much deeper, let me know in the comments and I'll make a more in-depth video talking about the various types of nodes available to you and what you can do with it in one of the future videos. If you want to learn more about how masks work, I have an in-depth video linked here. Please watch that next and until next time, bye.